Hello and welcome to the second video in the series by Exeter Science Centre where we celebrate the Great Conjunction. In the first video, Alice spoke to Professor Nathan Main at the University of Exeter about exoplanets. I'm Dr Natalie Whitehead and today I'm delighted to be joined by Dr Stephen Thompson, whose expertise is in the dynamics of the atmosphere on Earth and other planets, including Jupiter. So, Stephen, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Thanks very much. So it's um, it's great to be able to talk to you. So I'm Dr Stephen Thompson, as you said, and I spend a lot of my time thinking about the weather on other planets, and particularly the large-scale atmospheric dynamics, and researching that um, using computer simulations. So what do we mean by the dynamics of an atmosphere? And in this case, what do we mean by the uh, large scale dynamics? Well, when I say dynamics, what I'm really referring to is fluid dynamics. Um, and fluid dynamics be, is the study of how fluids flow and how they interact with obstacles, maybe how they react to hot and cold temperatures and things like that. Um, now, we're all used to thinking of Earth's ocean perhaps as a fluid, you know, it flows around obstacles, it has waves and turbulence and all that sort of thing. Um, but the Earth's atmosphere, it's also a fluid, right? It obeys a very similar set of mathematical equations, um, but its flows and waves just occur on different spatial scales and over different time scales. I spend a lot of time thinking about um, the atmosphere's behaviour as a fluid and how that impacts our weather, um, not only here on Earth, but also on other planets. Um, now, what do I mean by large scale dynamics? Um, well, if we think about, um, say, imagine you're on Google Maps, right, or Google Earth, and you're zoomed right into where you're sitting. Um, if you think about the wind at that location, right, it might be quite a blustery day. So the wind's sort of blowing in lots of different directions, it's blowing you all over the place. But then as we start to zoom out, perhaps we see the whole of the UK. And what we actually find perhaps on this, on this hypothetical day is that we're in the middle of a storm, right? So we've got a big cyclone sitting over the UK and that's actually causing the blustery winds locally. And but then if we zoom out even further, we might find that that storm is actually related to the jet stream, which is on a much larger scale, which has blown it in. Um, now, each of those features, the sort of small scale blustery winds and the, the storm and then the jet stream, as I said, happen on different spatial scales. And from a physical point of view, they have different sort of balances of forces and different physical processes that are relevant. And um, so, for example, the Coriolis force, uh, which happens because the Earth's rotating, is strongest on large scales and weak, quite weak on small scales. So the sort of um, the mathematical balances are, are different. Now, of course, that same kind of separation happens on um, other planets too, although perhaps you wouldn't walk out of your front door on a different planet. Um, and yeah, so I like to think about the largest of those scales, right? So the scales of the jet streams and the scales of the storms, partly because they're sort of mathematically more tractable, but also I think they're quite interesting for how it affects our weather. So we're very familiar with the weather on Earth, but what is Jupiter's weather like? That's a great question. Thank you. So, um, I guess Jupiter's weather has a lot of familiar features. You know, if you went there, you know, I mean, it wouldn't be advised, but if you went there, you'd recognise a lot of things, right? So Jupiter's atmosphere is full of storms, it's full of lightning, full of clouds and waves and all this sort of stuff that we'd be familiar with. But Jupiter's most significant weather feature, perhaps, is its um, jet streams. And jet streams are these things that are like rivers of air that run in the atmosphere. Um, on Jupiter, they run almost perfectly west to east and east to west. Um, which is quite interesting. They're sort of interestingly straight compared to those on Earth, which sort of meander a lot. Um, now on Earth, we have sort of two jet streams per hemisphere, and they play a big role in the weather that happens all over the world, including here in the UK. Um, but Jupiter's jet streams are much more numerous and powerful. So it has roughly eight jet streams per hemisphere compared to Earth's two. Um, but they can also, on Jupiter, reach speeds of up to 150 metres a second or 330 miles per hour. So much, much faster than we find here on Earth um, and therefore much more extreme in lots of ways. So it sounds like Jupiter's um, weather systems are really complicated compared to the Earth, say. Um, I suppose that might make it quite interesting to better study the Earth's climate system by using the knowledge that you're accruing from, from studying Jupiter. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so I guess it's one of the big motivations for doing planetary science. Obviously, we're interested in the planets and they're fascinating in and of their own right. But one of the main motivations, I guess, for me and for lots of others in the field is to say, OK, if we understand Earth, then we can take our understanding and apply it to planets. And if that understanding is real and complete, then we should be able to explain the planets as well. 
Um, and that really tests our understanding. You know, it says, OK, do I really understand the physics of Earth? Because if I understand those, I should be able to apply them elsewhere. I like to think of it a little bit like a medical trial, right? If you were studying the effects of a vaccine, say, for example, um, you wouldn't just focus on one person. You would do it on as many different people as possible to understand whether it really would. It's kind of the same with planets, right? It's, it's good just to study Earth, of course, but we want to understand how its, how its relations um, work with other planets. And yeah, it's, it certainly is a good test of our understanding. Um, I'm wondering about Saturn. So we've heard quite a lot about Jupiter. And of course, Jupiter is kind of a big gas giant that we use as a model for other exoplanets. But how is Saturn different? Well, in terms of their atmospheres, Jupiter and Saturn are very similar and have many similarities. Um, they're both made of predominantly hydrogen and they're both gas giants. The fact that they're predominantly hydrogen sort of relates to their sort of common formation from the solar nebula, which is mostly sort of hydrogen and things like that. Um, they both have multiple jet streams and clouds of different kinds. Um, but one thing you might notice if you look at Saturn and you sort of forget about the beautiful rings for a moment, if you just look at Saturn as a planet, it doesn't have these sort of beautiful stripes or striking colours that Jupiter has. And that's partly just because um, Saturn is covered in a sort of chemical haze that makes it much more difficult to see down to the cloud level. So if you sort of get rid of that, you can see more similar features to Jupiter, but just in terms of looking at them perhaps through a telescope. Um, a powerful telescope at least, that's one of the big reasons is that the haze is there on Saturn, whereas much less present on Jupiter. So what is your research specifically about? Well, that's a question I think about the answer to every day. It's a, a good thing to make sure that you pin down. I count myself very lucky to be in a job where I can think about all sorts of things, but my main goal as a researcher really is to understand what makes the planets different from each other and how we can sort of use that understanding to understand um, perhaps Earth's climate better. So, for example, why does Jupiter have more jet streams than Saturn or Uranus and Neptune? Uh, what powers the jet streams on those different planets? Is it the same process? Is it a different process? All that sort of thing. Um, we mentioned earlier about what makes the jet streams on Jupiter so straight, whereas on Earth they're much more wavy. And these are the kind of questions that I like to think about. Now, obviously, I don't just sit there in a darkened room thinking about it. How do I actually go about studying this? And well, I mainly do this by designing and running experiments with numerical models of atmospheres known as general circulation models or GCMs for short. Um, so, for example, by taking that code, what I can do is I can, you know, I can change different things about a planet, right? I can make it larger, I can spin it faster, and I can see how that changes its weather and its jet streams and its storms. And I can also do the same sort of thing with a similar code um, to problems in climate science, right? I could say, well, how do the jet streams change under climate change? So I could change the CO2 level, change aerosol levels, and have a look at how the dynamics changes. And as I said, I, I count myself very lucky to be able to think about these things as my job. And you technically sit in the maths department, don't you? Um, and how did you get into this area of research? Well, so yeah, you're right. I do sit within the maths department, even though perhaps um, my research might sound more like physics. Um, and now one of the interesting things about climate science and a related field like mine is that they draw on a huge number of different subjects, right? So there's the physics of fluids flow and how radiation works and how the sun works and all that sort of thing. But then there's an awful lot of complex maths that underpins all this. Um, so we need maths to help us understand the physics and physics to help us understand how the thing works. So, you know, it's, it's a very interdisciplinary area. Um, and perhaps in climate science, you know, there's more that's perhaps more like geography, physical geography or chemistry even. Um, and all of these things go into understanding it. Um, but in terms of my own sort of path, um, I did physics and maths as um, A-levels, then a physics as an undergraduate degree, and then a PhD in a maths department before settling here in maths in Exeter. So I guess I've sort of um, gone between different fields, I guess, as I've gone through, but with this common thread of climate science um, and the things that sort of ha help me to understand how planets work. And I guess that led me to both physics and maths. Great. Thank you so much, Stephen. It's been really great to speak to you and hear about your fascinating research. Thank you. We hope you've enjoyed this discussion about the atmospheres of these amazing gas giants, which are very soon to be moving close to each other in the evening sky. You don't need any specialist equipment to see them, just a good southwesterly view and a clear night. 
If you want to find out more, you can sign up on the jupitersaturn2020.org website where you can find resources and sign up for updates to find out when the astrophysicists are going to be streaming live from their telescopes. To find out more about the Exeter Science Centre, check out our website and follow us on social media. Thanks very much for watching.